On this episode of Purposely Curious, I sit down with Leone D'Antonio to discuss a subject that is currently changing our way of life and how we interact with each other, COVID-19. We discuss the virus, our feelings about it, how we are coping, and end with some much-needed COVID-19 memes to help us laugh in these scary times. Get nice and cozy while socially distancing yourself as this episode starts now. Hello, Leone. How are you? Hey, Mary. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, thank you for joining me on another episode. This You were my first guest on the first episode, and now you are here on my fourth. Oh, that's right. Huh? Wow. Time flies. It really does. Um, <laughs> I took somewhat of a... I, I've been putting them out more, but I think after yours, I took a few weeks of... Uh, Kind of like weird hiatus, I guess. Um, and the reason we're having this um, is because you suggested that maybe we should do this. Uh, I, what I had been doing before was I was meeting with um, people in person, but due to the COVID-19, we're doing social distancing. And so you suggested we do it where you're remotely um, meeting with me and we can discuss things so that I you know, can continue putting content out. So I thought that was a really good suggestion on your part. Um, but going back to what I was saying, the fact that I had kind of like a few weeks between your episode and my second episode um, was because I was following the coronavirus outbreak in China and I was, you know, starting to kind of see that it was going to be an issue. And I might have gotten a little bit obsessed with it, which in a way I'm kind of glad that I did because... I'm not at all shocked with what's happening right now, although part of me wishes we it was all fake, if that makes sense, and never came over here. Right. Yeah, so, um, but anyways, I appreciate you having the time to meet with me, and, you know, he has such a brain capacity for this technical stuff that I'm not, so he's teaching me something new today as well. (laughs) Well, just so everybody out there listening can understand is that you are in your home and I am in my home. And through the magic of technology, we are connected. We are both social distancing and uh, staying in our respective homes to keep ourselves safe and our fellow friends and family safe as well. Yes. And I said, I know it sounds like we're sitting next to each other, but we're not. <laughs> Oh, yes. I'm really excited because I've not done this before, so I'm excited. I feel like I'm expanding thanks to you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's so important that, you know, uh, I love your show, and so far I've loved the guests you've had on, on, and, you know, I I suggested it because it's so important that, you know, when you keep the show going and, you know, doing this thing in in these difficult times when we can't meet in person with people, you know? Yeah. And if you are doing that out there, naughty, naughty, you're not supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so as you guys all know, um, by now you should know what's going on is that we have a coronavirus that is called COVID-19, which is a new strain, um, that we have not seen, nor do we have immunity, um, to it. And that's why it makes it so deadly. Um, it has now been called a pandemic by the World Health Organization, which I think they kind of laxed a little bit, um, but it's whatever. It's, it, it is what it is now. Um, but um, one of the things that a lot of people have kind of discussed was like, oh, coronavirus has been here for a really long time. And yes, it has. I think coronavirus might have been... I want to say officially discovered in the 1960s, um, which is something that was, as we know, as the common cold now. Um, There are other types of coronaviruses, such as SARS and MERS, who weren't as deadly and did not, um, how would you say, did not spread as much as COVID-19 has this time around. Um, But um, I wanted to discuss what makes it a coronavirus. For those people that don't know, because I did see a few posts online where people were posting, you know, the Lysol bottles or, you know, the Clorox bottles saying it's effective in killing a coronavirus. And people were like, oh, my God, 
this is not new. They've known about it this whole time. So you being a lab science guy, do you want to go into why, what makes a coronavirus a coronavirus? Yeah. Well, funny you mentioned that actually. And, and also this is the second SARS virus. So the actual like technical name for this is the SARS, uh, coronavirus two. Mm. So SARS, I think we first saw in 2003, I want to say, and that came out of, uh, China. It's, you know, it stands for severe acute respiratory syndrome. And during that pandemic, actually it was, I think it was more epidemic. I don't think it was pandemic. I, I could be wrong though. During, it was an epidemic. It's epidemic. Yeah. I remember during that time being in the hospital with my father and every hospital had a notice on the door that said, you know, SARS, if you have trouble breathing, you know, re- you know, come get a mask, report to the, you know, the, um, the, uh, attendant, you know, immediately. So it was taking very, very, you know, very, um, uh, what's that word? Seriously. So this is the second time we see SARS. So that's, that's the official name of this virus, you know, but you know, in the media, we're just calling it coronavirus you know, um, COVID-19 for short, coronavirus disease, 2019. Now, this virus is unique because they call it corona because of the shape. And, you know, the it has like a, kind of like a, you think of the corona of the sun, it's like an, a, you know, an outer, like halo around, you know, that's, that's, that's what this virus looks like. And it has all these little um, things sticking out that are, uh, bunch of you know sugar bases and stuff that are like uh, that bind to receptors and that's why they specifically target you know the ones in your mucosal cells whether in your mouth in your nose or your eyes for example and they easily attach so it makes them very effective in spreading and you know get, getting into your body and, and causing the effect the infection the pro- now the problem with this is a typical um, uh, common cold or a flu virus, for example, you know, those have a, a small window of, uh, of how infectious the, the person is. So, for example, a common cold, you know, you can, you know, um, sneeze or cough and the droplets go in the air and they usually dissipate and they probably are not active anymore after X amount of time, you know. Now, what makes coronavirus deadlier is that, you know, in the last couple of weeks, it's been more in the media that the experts have been saying that the virus can float in the air, basically become airborne for hours. So if somebody sneezed in the room who was infectious, that those little particles uh, basically are are so small that gravity does not take effect. So gravity is not going to pull them down immediately. They're going to float around the air and probably stay in that room for hours. So if somebody sneezed or coughed in an elevator or like a house or a room, then those things are floating. All somebody else has to do is walk in and just breathe it and then possibly get infected. That's why, and, 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 and the fact that, um, it takes, uh, you know, there's a long incubation period. It's like, it's, you know, at first people thought it was four days then it's like 14 days. And then it's like, you know, because it's that long, that's what makes this virus very deadly and very infectious. And that's why it keeps spreading because you or I could be walking down the street for two weeks, not even feeling any symptom whatsoever, yet be infected. And at the same time, continue to spread it to somebody else. So that's, right. that's what makes this one so unique and so different than the common cold, for example, or even SARS, um, SARS, the first SARS, uh, Corona, which came out in 2003, you know, in that, in that case, it was not as, you know, there was no long incubation period. So this one is, is crazy that way. Yeah. They say that you can have symptoms between two to 14 days. Um, there have been documented cases in China that some people also had up to 28 days later symptoms, um, which is, is again, none of this is new news. It's been online. It's been reported by science, kind of uh, science journals. 
Right. Um, and then you know Michael Osterholm, who's an American infectious disease ep- epidemiologist, who's been saying it's been airborne. It's it, even in Chinese scientific papers, it's airborne, and the CDC continues to say that it's droplet. So I don't. I, again, I'm gonna talk about it, but. I don't really follow the CDC because I feel like everything that they've been publishing recently, I've known in January. Um, and so that's one of the frustrating things on my end as a nurse. Right. Um, is that I feel they're doing a disservice to the medical professionals here. And we rely on them so much for information. Um, I've been very, I guess, I I want to say I've I've been following it in December. I think you and I spoke about it um, a long time ago where I said, something's going on in China. We need to pay attention, right? Right. This, I've never seen anything like this. And, you know, I'm reading actual like science journals and I started to mention this to people, um, the fact that it's airborne and, you know, people that are clinicians, nurses, doctors are dying or, you know, after they started to speak out about how deadly it seemed it was. Um, they were being shut down by the Chinese government. Um, but long story short, blah, 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 going back to what I was trying to say is that I highly respect Mr. Michael Ulsterholm, um, who is you know, the American infectious disease epidemiologist. And he literally said, it's airborne and you can literally breathe, right? And get it. Yep. The, um, the other thing too is that what has been seen is this is again going back to january and december is that people who had it were positive a symptomatic would you know spread it like the first case that it was documented at least outside of china was when a chinese businesswoman went to germany had a business um she had no symptoms at the time had a business meeting with this company in germany and somehow after she left and returned to china the people that she met for that business meeting were then positive and had symptoms of covid-19 and that was well documented um which you know again i could be a total nerd that likes microbiology and pathophysiology um so i i was reading up on it you know and so i was like okay this is highly contagious um but i feel like we're so behind in general that you know it scares me you know what i mean like especially in my line of work i feel like even now people aren't taking it as serious as they should um i don't know but if i want to recommend that mr michael ulsterholm is interviewed by um what is his name rogan joe rogan joe rogan in fact i listened to that one it was a really good podcast episode Yes, and like seriously, in the first five minutes, um, excuse my language, that motherfucker breaks it down in the first five minutes, and you're just like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. But that I feel, I feel like I'm the type of person that needs. I like people to don't beat around the bush. You know what I mean? Tell me how serious it is. And to me, I I'm, I don't follow Joe Rogan, but I listened to that podcast episode, and I was like. Okay, this is exactly what I kind of already knew based on what I was reading. And now he's breaking it down in terms that anyone can understand. Um, And so now we're here where we're social distancing ourselves because the government now sees the severity of it. Um, Whether it's, you know, too late, that's up for debate. But now we're all here where our lives have kind of changed, right? Um. How has your life changed when, since they said we should socially distance ourselves? Well, it was interesting. That happened on my, on my birthday. So, Oh, my, my happy birth- birthday. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> my birthday got canceled, A. And it's so funny, for many years I was looking forward to it because it's like, oh, my birthday's on a Saturday this year. Cool. Nope. Canceled. <laughs> so, um, yeah, immediately I thought, okay, this is going to be interesting because not only uh, Michael Strom, but we also have um, part of the presidential task force, uh, Anthony, Dr. Anthony Fauci. And he's been great about being very open and honest with people and saying, Hey, you know, this is coming. Hey, this is the recommendation. We got to do this. We got, you know, so it's great to hear a voice like him as well. 
where you know they're like like you said mary they're, he's speaking it you know you know in common words saying you know not not being super technical not being super science about it but just telling people hey we got to do this or else we're going to get sick and die you know yeah and it's like yeah it's kind of like you know i mean okay good you know good point we got to you know start distancing ourselves start staying home you know start changing our ways and you know washing our hands and if you're lucky enough to have any kind of disinfecting products disinfecting you know whatever you touch when you go out grocery shopping or you know pumping gas that kind of stuff you know so i'm grateful for those kind of people that are out there right now speaking about it daily and i think that's super important to listen to them i don't care who if you listen to or your, your government if you don't like your government whatever it's like i don't care about that but listen to the scientists listen to the doctors because they're the ones that do know they're the ones that's spreading you know all the right information um, yeah but yeah it, it uh immediately i lost my job immediately i work in a research lab and you know the one thing the university um the the, the place where i work is not only run by you know administrators but the administrators are also scientists and doctors so they know you know they're the ones that said okay this is coming we're, we're all going to be exposed to it there's no way to protect anybody here it's going to get ugly and we need to do two things we need to protect both the hospitals on campus and uh so they let everyone go basically every administrator uh you know Every research lab was shut down. Everybody was sent home. And that was an immediate bummer for me. I mean, I understand the dangers of this virus. And I, you know, my, in my work environment is very different because uh, like, for example, my, my building is, you know, roughly the size of a football field, you know, and yet there's only maybe like mm, 60 people in the whole building over on two floors, you know? So it's one of those things where it's like, nobody works in close proximity. And it's, it's, it's such a clean environment. And plus I'm wearing PPE all day long, personal protection equipment, you know, whether it's gloves, lab coats, face shields, you know, face masks, you know, that kind of stuff, goggles, all that stuff. So it's like, I feel safer there than anywhere else. But to be fair, it's like, Hey, you know, they're trying to keep everybody who works on campus safe and they can, you know, they want to make sure just send everybody home you know, and I understood that it was, it's a big bummer because they lost my job but I'm not the only one I look around and I realize all my friends lost their jobs and they work in the industry the movie industry the music industry you know some of them were lucky and got the keep to their jobs and are you know maybe are still on payroll and most of them did not most of them all, of, all the productions all the movies that were being filmed got shut down TV shows. So there's nothing in production right now. So whatever you're, you're lucky enough to currently find as a new release on Netflix or streaming or whatever, consider that lucky because you know, that was either done last year or over the last few months, then it got finished just in time. But for the most part, you know, a lot of entertainment business people are out of jobs and the same goes for restaurant people as well. You know, um, bartenders, you know, servers, you know, chefs, cooks, you know, it's like, it's it's affected pretty much you know everybody. Yeah, that is true. Um, actually, before uh, you and I started this, I kind of had texted you that my brother had called me. So my own mother is also applying for unemployment right now. Um, so basically, her because they're not able to go to work, her right. boss told her that she's still employed essentially, but. They've marked her as unemployed so that she can apply for unemployment just because we don't know how long this will last. Um, and so my mom hasn't really been out of the house for like three weeks, I think. Is that right. how long the self-isolation has been going? Like three weeks now, right? Yeah, it's been it's been about three weeks. Yeah, about that. And um... yeah, and they've extended it to April 30th. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. I think... Uh... Because it wasn't the government at first. It was supposed to be like a month. Uh, it was supposed to be April 19th, right? I think that was like a month later, right? From March 19th. Yeah, I think at first they had said like two weeks. Yeah, and then it's like, you know, the, the, the truth is, you know, you got to pay attention to what's going on. 
in places like New York and Louisiana, specifically New Orleans, you know, because there were a lot of people. Uh, two, there's two reasons for that. Um, one, New York is so heavily populated in small areas. So, for example, unlike Los Angeles, where I live 22 miles away from you, Mary, we're very, dis- very, we're very distant, right? We're all spread yes. out. Like you look at your neighbors, yes. everybody has a house, everybody has a car, everybody drives any everywhere, and we all live, you know, spread apart. Unlike New York, where everybody lives in one building. Correct. You know, everybody takes the same elevator. The same. Everybody's stacked up. Yeah. Every. L.A. is like you have a lot of one, two story buildings, right? And then Manhattan, New York is like 15 story buildings to up to what, you know, oh my God. huge as buildings. Exactly. You know, so you might have like 400 residents in one building. And, and we have public transportation. Right. Something we don't really have here as far as uh, we drive a lot, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it's nice, right? I mean, to live in a city where you don't have to drive. However... You know, now that you have an infectious disease going around that's not just living on surfaces for nine hours or three, four days, but it's also airborne. So now it's like not just the building you live in, but now it's also in the Uber, in the cabs, in the subway, in the trains. So you can't avoid it. That's why the big numbers are in New York right now. And yes. they continue to go up. And now, now we're starting to see other outbreaks in like... Louisiana, you know, New Orleans. And the reason for that, going back to Mardi Gras. Yes. So going back to exactly the point you're trying to make is that a lot of the cases that we're seeing right now in New York were of people who contracted the disease probably a month ago. Um, A month, depending on the incubation period, right? They, right. So they're, they're, I guess they might have gotten it a month to a month and a half ago. And so we're just now seeing the effects of it. And that's why social distancing is so important. And then maybe Mardi Gras was what, two weeks ago? Uh, I can't, yeah, I can't remember when. Yeah, I, let's just say it was two weeks ago. And there's a video that I remember seeing online of Mardi Gras in New Orleans where the cops were kind of like what is that street called where everyone parties i've never been i'm adding that to my bucket list but i've never been to mardi gras <laughs> but they were basically you know the amount of people partying was ridiculous and the cops were telling everyone to disperse to go you know so that whole time we were, they were probably spreading it to each other right. asymptomatically because that's something that's been proven is that people who have it can have no symptoms and spread it and now we're seeing them have not only a jump in cases um but they have a high rate of death right now is what i'm noticing from the numbers i've been seeing yeah and and that goes with the all the health issues people in the south you you know deal with there's high cases of obesity high cases of diabetes you know heart disease so that that's a big factor, and that's all ages and all body types. You know, people down there. It's it's you know it's kind of regional because of the diet. For example, you know, you live in a place where you eat fried foods, fried fish. You know, and which all you know all sounds so yummy because I love that stuff too. You know, but you know oh, that man, just that I, just goes I feel you. yeah. You know, that just goes with with the culture, right? That just goes with you know with what you're used to. Yeah. So a lot of people down there are are going to be affected because it's like. Sure, you know, teenage son, super healthy athlete, whatever, but, you know, has some kind of health issue and then you get to get this virus, you get sick, and then it's like, you know, you end up as as a more severe case. Yeah. Um, and that also brings something up that I wanted to mention was that, you know, I'm 36 years old. And so I'm at that cusp of where I may start having underlying issues that I've not been aware of, right? Because I'm not in my 20s anymore. Um, So for all I know, I could have underlying issues that I've not been diagnosed with yet, right? Um, So that's one of those things where it scares me because, you know, maybe I'm overthinking it. I am a worrier for those who don't know me. I worry and I always think of the worst case scenario. I always, you know, try to prepare for the worst case 
situation. Um, but, you know, I started to think about exactly what you were saying, like our diets. Um, but at the same time, there might be physical issues that I, for example, I'm speaking for myself, that I may have that I've just not been diagnosed with because I haven't been to the doctor because I haven't had an exacerbation or whatever. I'm also thinking of it as a, you know, medical professional. Um, and so I know that there are cases of people who are in their 30s, have never been diagnosed with anything, who are then being ventilated, right? Um, one of the things, the reason why there's such a big issue or focus on ventilators is that the people who have you know, statistically gotten COVID-19 and whose bodies didn't have mild symptoms tend to be on a ventilator, need to be on a ventilator to to survive. But it's not like they're on a ven ventilator for three days, four days. It, it's almost like two to three weeks on average. That's crazy. And that's where, the, that's where the shortage comes in. And that's why you keep hearing in the media, we need more ventilators. Because an average ICU patient could be on it for three to four days. Now you have someone who is on it for a few weeks. Right. And so that's where you keep hearing that. Um, so people are surviving. 80% of the people who get it have mild symptoms. But going back to what I was saying, none of us really know, a lot of us don't really know if we have underlying conditions yet because we haven't had to be diagnosed you know they kind here in america they kind of treat you based on when you come in you have an exacerbation then they diagnose you um so it's i'm sure you've heard prior to this when you'll have like a football player healthy but then his heart stopped right they had right. an underlying condition that was never diagnosed like you know their heart was enlarged stuff like that so what i'm getting at is i think the mentality that people have sometimes of like, oh, well, did they have underlying conditions? Is that's why they died? Like maybe trying to make ourselves feel better. I feel like it, that annoys me because I'm like, well, you and I don't know if we have underlying conditions. Right. You know what I mean? We may have, but we just are asymptomatic. So let's just assume that we have underlying conditions and let's socially distance ourselves to slow the spread, right? To not be that statistic. Right. Can I ask you a quick question about the ventilators, though? It, yeah. Is that the, the similar or the same as being intubated? Yes, you have to be intubated. So we're talking about be... tubes down your nose into your lungs. Yes. So basically what I've read from, again, I'm such a nerd and it's probably annoying. <laughs> but um, what happens is that COVID-19 um, from what they've seen is, is it gives you pneumonia. And what pneumonia is, is basically a lot of fluid in your lungs. So you're, you're essentially, you can't, you're gasping for air. You cannot breathe. You're short of breath. Um, so what they have done in China is when they did, um, this is a good metaphor when they, so what, what the ventilators do is try to help you breathe and inflate your lungs while you have the pneumonia. Um, some of the autopsies that were done in some of the patients who died from COVID-19 were their, their, you know, your lung is supposed to be like a sponge, right? Right. So when you do an autopsy, for example, um, you press on the lung, it should kind of like inflate itself back up even, even when it's in an autopsy. Right. The people who had the COVID-19, now this is severe. This is on the severe end. Um, it was almost like mushy. It wouldn't, it wasn't like a sponge, like it should be. So it, it, that's where the ventilators come in, um, into trying to help you breathe. And a lot of people can survive and can wean themselves off after two to three weeks. Um, but the, again, the autopsies were the severe cases which is still ongoing there's it's like primitive data at this point but i thought that was very fascinating to see that how bad the lungs were instead of like a sponge right pushing the sponge down right this it was like they would push it down and it was just like mush and that to me is scary i'm not trying to scare anyone but again these are the severe cases and so the ventilators to ventilate it's they would intubate you 
to try to help you breathe and get that air in. Because when you get the air in to your lungs, you're getting that oxygen to your blood, right? And then the blood flows through your body and it's kind of giving the rest of your organs life. Um, that's why they say drink fluid so that your kidneys don't fail. Cause again, all of our organs are kind of intertwined. Yeah. It's like the basic, without, the basics of medicine. It's like you, if you have one organ fail, they all fail. Mm-hmm. You know, but, um, exactly. Yeah. It, it's in, and it's, you know, in your lungs with, with the pneumonia, which is, which is a bacteria, by the way, it's, it's, um, for those that don't know, it's, it's the bacterial growth is, is what's covering all the, the, the places where the oxygen is supposed to bind to so that it gets uptaked into your bloodstream so you can, you know, function, function normally as a human being, you know? So if you don't get that oxygen, that's, that's the number one problem. You know, your organs start to fail as, as you were saying, Mary, and, uh, all do because of the fluid in your lungs, you know, mostly caused by that, by that bacteria and pneumonia is something you can get any time. It's very common to get it from a gym, you know, yeah, or even your, is. like your shower curtains, for example, because it, it, it it's, um, something that you can carry in your, you know, in your airways, you know, in your upper like respiratory system and spread it, you know, some, in some location and then it'll, it'll, it'll thrive. It has the right humidity, temperature, all that stuff, which is why a lot of people sometimes get it from a gym. And it's, it's, if you think of it, why a gym would have it, because a gym is a place where you have a bunch of people inhaling and exhaling at the same time. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's one possible location. But in this case, uh, you, you know, you're con- you're contracting the COVID virus, you know, first, and that's what's leading to the end stage of, of the cycle of the, of the virus, which is basically the pneumonia infections, you know? Yes. And you said this is the SARS-CoV-2, which yes. is basically the, the, what it stands for is severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus. Yep. The word there is severe. So you have acute respiratory syndromes now, acute respiratory failure, but this, this, the SARS, the S is severe. And so um, we're hoping that this will, with social distancing, go away, right? Because if we're not moving, the virus can't move. If we're moving, the fucking virus is moving. Excuse right. my language. <laughs> yeah. um, but if we look at the flu, right, the flu tends to peak in July of every year, every year and then it comes back in november so it it peaks twice in a year and so we're hoping um i i mean for me i would hope it would just disappear tomorrow um like sars did initially it just literally disappeared right um but it sounds like this might be here with us because of how contagious it is until at least july from what i've been reading um, so I'm hoping, and I'm really hoping that it really disappears. Um, it's really contagious. You know, it's, we were talking about how it's changed our lives and social distancing. Um, as some of you guys know, I'm a nurse, so I work with hospice terminally ill. And so I, myself, you know, my expertise is dealing with the dying, the pe- people who have a limited time on this earth. And so my goal is to make sure that they are comfortable, that we're managing all of their symptoms wherever their home is, whether it's home, you know, in a boarding care, an assisted living, in a nursing home, or even in a hospital at some times. Um, but it, it, this is on another level because I've never felt afraid of my health, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so it's been kind of an emotional roller coaster for me. Um, because yeah, you know, this, one of the yeah. things that people don't realize is that in your profession, you know, it's not a matter of, you know, oh, you got to be careful not to get exposed. No, no. It's, it's a matter of time of when you will be exposed or if not, you've already been, you know? Yes. So a lot of my friends, you know, I, I, 
a lot of my friends are nurses and doctors and we've almost kind of come to the conclusion that we will probably get it if we haven't already gotten it and we're just assuming everybody has it um a lot you know again i my expertise is end of life so i deal with death and dying on a daily basis um and so the nursing that my other friends do whether it's you know er or rehab that might be new to them but what's new to me is the fear of will i get it you know because i don't work in a hospital so i may have less ppe personal protective you know equipment than maybe the hospital staff has um and so for me it's been kind of an emotional roller coaster in the last few weeks now that we know that it's here we know that it's spreading um because you know a lot of we had a nursing home in seattle that had a a breakout an outbreak um where i want to say a lot if not everyone from staff to patients had it did you hear about it yeah it was a it was a it was a big outbreak it it was like i remember it started with just just the one one person obviously one one patient zero and then it went to like four or something. And the next thing you know, like 80, 80 patients had it in one location. Yeah. 80 patient, 80 plus at this point. Yeah. And then I believe 30 plus died from it. None of the employees, but those were just residents that lived there. And so patient zero, do you know who patient zero is from that? From, from, uh, who was that the, outbreak? I don't remember. Was it? I, mean, I can tell you. Oh, you know, great. <laughs> so, patient zero from that was the first patient that the United States had, which was a person who flew from Wuhan, China, mm-hmm. and w- did everything by the book. They had a fever when they got here, right? Um, they wore a mask. They took themselves to the ER. Did everything that we were supposed to do. Um, and then they were isolated at Providence in Seattle and right. somehow by then it had already spread. So that just goes to show that people were, he probably spread it while he was asymptomatic. Um, and then, you know, again, somehow what I'm getting at is that scientists have been able to link it to the, to patient zero, which was the first U S case in Seattle at the Providence hospital, which I thought was amazing. Yeah, I mean that that's awesome they were able to find that person, but you know you know what is sad is that we still don't know who patient 0 is, the very first one in Wuhan, China. No, and we'll, we'll probably never know. Um and, I've read some papers that, you know, they may have gone back to up to October even though they didn't ring the bell, doctors didn't start ringing the bell till I think the end of December in China. There I think they have some weird pneumonia type of cases in October of last year in China. Um, I yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it's sad mm-hmm. because it's like in this day and age, I mean, you know, th- they're a communist country, you know, and, and they're, you know, they just bury stuff that they want to, they, you know, they don't report stuff. And I think what happened was when, you know, t- to your point, as you were saying, this could have been, this could have been, you know, one of those things that started started back in October, not December, like you know we're told, and it, with that first uh, patient, you know, which is which they're able to link back to either, uh, what is it, a bat or um, a pangolin, right? One, one of those two animals, yeah, yeah, which are illegal. Not supposed to be able to buy them and eat them. They're supposed to be illegal, especially the pangolins. They're like a delicacy. I, you know, I've seen the photos and stuff of how they make soup out of it and all that. But somehow, either the person who was selling them, or maybe it was somebody who bought them and ate them, or somebody yeah. who just walked by the market. It's like, it's like, who, it's like who knows? But one who of knows? those people, you know, is patient zero. And I'm pretty sh- positive that China knows who that person is and has not turned, like, that information over. And, and the reason why that's important, by the way is because by knowing patient zero, you can track the history of the virus. You can track, you know, how many, what type of mutations it has undergone. 
and thereby you could kind of see where it's going. So for example, let's say patient zero was super highly infectious and anybody who treated him was dead, right? And then maybe, you know, the, the 20th person he infected or he or she infected, maybe now well, that person has a, has a less severe version of it. So yes, yeah. it's, it sucks because it's SARS and it turns into pneumonia and all that stuff, but it wasn't as deadly as the first one. So by knowing yeah. that information is like, by knowing the genetic component of, of that virus, we can actually track it and be like, hey, we know what happened. We see the mutations. We know where it's going. But and sadly, we don't. And all we have is patient zero here in Washington. That's all we have to work with, which which sucks because we're missing a, we're missing a gap. And the last thing I read was that patient zero Washington does not match patient, you know, patient whatever in China. So yeah. it's like a whole, yeah. it's, it's still the virus. But obviously, it's gone undergone mutations, so it's changed. But it's not the same, you know. It's the same virus, but it's it's just it's not the same, you know, genetic composition. It's like it's it's been changed. It's been evolving. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I think that's you know I was sick like maybe two months ago, and is it weird for me to have, I really, really, I was like, I wish I had the coronavirus because then I could have some antibodies. <laughs> That's like the worst thing to think, but I'm afraid, Leone. Uh, you know, I really am. Yeah, here's the, here's the um, thing though. You know, and those antibodies though, we still don't know. And this is interesting because I keep hearing these, there are little stories that pop up in the science community that say people are getting reinfected. So Reinf reinfected or they never really fully cleared it because right. if you, th if you think about it, like some people are testing negative, but they might not have the, com the viral load for the test to actually flag it. If that right. makes sense. Right. And, and so like and, if we look at HIV, for example, mm -hmm. um, HIV, some people within seven, eight days might have the viral load of the HIV disease where they can be, to have a blood test and then you know test positive and it can take someone else who was infected at the same time right. up to six months to show that they are positive so i feel like yes i understand that they were reinfected but they could have probably never fully cleared it um at least that's my opinion um because it's so new do you know what I mean? Or like maybe they started to fight it and then all of a sudden right. they're, they laxed on eating healthy and so on and so on. And then it just starts to bounce up because we don't know enough about the virus. Right. right. And, that, and that's, yeah, that's a re very good point because it's, if it wasn't clear, then what's causing the amplification again, you know? Right. So that, that's, um, that's, that's the other part. It's like, okay, you got sick, you felt bad, you had some issues. Nine or three, four weeks into it, you're getting over it, but then it's spiking again. So it's like, what's causing that? You know? Yeah, I mean, it could be like you said, a reinfection, but it also could be the fact that your immune system was fighting it, right? Keeping those viral loads down, and then all of a sudden it's spiking up because your immune system is whatever. I don't know. I'm not a <laughs> microbiologist, but or a epidemiologist, but that just that's just how it rings in my head. <laughs> right. You know, on that note, I want to mention something uh, very interesting here because this was this is so funny that it's making me laugh, but at the same time, it's making me cringe. People online <laughs> are posting stupid things, and by that I mean there's people posting about don't take Advil, don't take ibuprofen; it makes the virus worse and it can kill you. That's false. Is it? Yes. And I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, the other one I, heard, I keep seeing is drink hot water because it flushes the virus from your throat down into your stomach where the stomach acids kill it. False. And uh, what else? What else? What else? There, there, were, there were some good ones. Um, oh, my God. It, it'll come to me in a second. But those two. Okay. The ibuprofen story was something that came out of the Netherlands published in literature two cases only two cases think about this there's over 1.2 million cases right now at time of release okay over I'm sorry two cases only were reported because those patients had 
underlying symptoms, right? And they're taking medications for those, those other uh, health issues they were having, whether it's diabetes or heart disease. The ibuprofen reacted with that specific medication and it caused, uh, it caused one of those weird uh, overactivities of the ACE receptor, which is involved with how the virus is attached and thereby, you know, they think that they got worse because of that situation. So they reported yeah. on those two patients. Somehow somebody read that story and said, oh my God, everywhere in the world it's happening. Don't take ibuprofen. That's, that's not true. It was two specific patients, very specific health conditions, super specific to the medications. And next thing you know, somebody reads this and, and spreads it like the gospel. And I'm like, that is wrong. Like if you're having, yeah, I, if you're having a fever, you can still take Tylenol, Tylenol, Advil. You're fine. Take the, you know, you know, the, 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 the fever reducers. It's, it's, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to make it worse. You know, that's, that's, yeah. that's false. And I think this is why you should always talk to your doctor. Because, exactly. You know, Tylenol and Advil are completely different, Leone. Right. Ad, ad, tyl, acetaminophen, which is Tylenol. Mm-hmm. Tylenol is the trade name, right? Acetaminophen right. is a generic. Ibuprofen, ibuprofen is Advil. Advil. Um, ibuprofen, for example, if you have kidney problems, the doctor won't prescribe ibuprofen right. because it, it does take a toll on your kidneys. And so they will tell you to take Tylenol, which is acetaminophen. Acetaminophen, right. um, if you have liver issues because it affects the liver, Yep. You know, they'll tell you not to take it. So probably what happened was that these two patients in the Netherlands had kid underlying kidney issues. And so if they took Tylen, uh, ibuprofen, which is Advil, um, it probably made it worse for them. But if you don't have kidney issues, it shouldn't be an issue. And so that's why it's very important to, you know, be in contact with your doctors right. who know your all your comorbidities and everything that you have because every medication may affect you differently. Right. Um, and you know, you know, all no medication comes with no side effects and that's just a fact. You know, you go pick up a medication from the pharmacy, they give you 10 pages of worst case scenarios, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I think probably, you know, I think people are just scared. And so whatever they read, they just want to make it so that it's, easier for them to maybe deal with the fact like, oh, I don't want to make it worse on myself. And so although it is wrong for a lot of people, it might be the right thing for certain people. But that's where going to your doctor is very important or speaking to your primary care physician via phone is very important because um, I do know like my mom, for example, she has she can't take ibuprofen, I think. for that same kind of situation, you know what I mean? But people who have cirrhosis or, you know, any kind of liver issues, they tell them to stay away from Tylenol. Yeah. Um, But but, very very specifically linked to just the virus though, not any other like uh, liver, you know. Yeah. For the story, it was very specific to just two patients and it was specifically linked to their their ongoing medication. And, th- and and I think that's exactly the, because we run with it, right? We yeah, see exactly. that, we see the title. We're like, oh my God, we better not take ibuprofen. Yeah. But it's on a case to case basis, you know, based on what medications we're on or two, if our function of our organs aren't up to par, then right. there are certain medications we shouldn't be taking. Right. Yeah. You know, the other one I heard, what I just remembered was uh, if sunlight. If you go out in the sun, it kills the virus. Yeah, and I've heard I'm that like, too. I'm like, oh Isn't my that God. what Trump said initially? It'll be gone by April because of the warmer weather. <laughs> I'm oh, not trying to politicize this. No, but no, no. But, but I mean, I, I understand why he said that because the 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 CDC people around him were you know casually talking about how uh, the the flu virus re- you know behaves. Which is yeah. linked, which is linked to to climate, definitely. Because notice how we don't have the flu here in the summertime. Yeah, but the flu statistically peaks in July. Isn't that summer? Not here though. It's July in um, uh, Australia. Yeah. Like in like in like in those like in those uh, 
countries like, uh, you know, Southern Hemisphere, they, it, in our summertime is their winter time. Sure. And, and, sure. and as soon as they get into the spring, I mean, all it takes is just one person to jump on a plane from China, Australia to LA or New York. And that's how the spread, you know, the, the flu virus spreads every year, you know? Yeah. And so our flu season is what, from November to like March or something or April? Or March, something? March or April. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I've had the flu a couple times over the last 10 years and, you know, I, I, I take the flu shot every year, by the way, and I do believe it helps, even if it is not a perfect match to that flu strain, whether it be H1N1, H1N5, whatever, it doesn't matter because it, it still helps you lessen the symptoms. So if you do get it, it feels more like a mild cold than, you know, having the severe flu symptoms of throwing up and body aches and can't get out of bed and you're super sick and high fever. So for me, yeah. it's for me, I've been lucky that the flu shot is always, the vaccines always worked for me. So I'm grateful mm -hmm. for that. But yeah, seasonally, you know, like, like right now we're, we're in springtime here in Los Angeles and this is, this should, this should be the end of the flu season. So generally speaking, people, you know, I've been, have been tying that into, it's like, oh, if the virus behaves the same way, because people are now able to open windows and doors and no more heater, which is recirculating the air in your house or apartment, you can now open, you know, you can always, you can go outside, fresh air, and thereby the spread of the virus will lessen. But we, you know, probably not the case with the coronavirus, you know, and probably yeah. why they're still going to have a social distancing for another couple more months, you know, or three more, who knows, you know. Because hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, well, it all depends on if you you're, if you're doing your job wherever you're listening. If you're doing your job and keeping home and not spreading this, then that's going to help the situation, you know. Because if yeah. you're not spreading it, then you're not you're not giving it to somebody else, and some of that person doesn't give it to hundred another hundred people, and and if this dies down, then yeah, we can go back to work and reopen, you know, restaurants and theaters, and you know all that fun stuff you know if when the coronavirus or COVID-19 actually starts to dissipate do you think it's going to take time for people to get back to their regular you know lives as far as going to the movies going to football games like stuff like that I think there's you know that's really interesting question very very good question because I think there's going to be a population where people are going to be like nope I'm not going out for a while you know and then there's people that are just dying to get out. They don't give a fuck. You know, they're like, I need, I need, I have, a, I need, I need a drink. You know, they're like, I need my football games. You know, I need to, I need to go see Taylor Swift at the new arena. You know, that kind of, you know, they're like, I need to get out, you know? And it's like, okay. And either things will be fine and, and infections don't spread and that's great. Or maybe that causes, you know, a second wave and that would really suck. Because then we're back to right. square one. That's like, okay, go back home. You know, everything's shut down, you know. But I don't know. I think it's I think it's 50-50. There's the mentality of people that just aren't over it. And, you know, like, you know, we, like you and I, you know, live miles apart. But, we, you know, we haven't seen people. I mean, you, you've obviously, you still have to go to work. I don't. Um, but you're still seeing patients, you know, and, and, and staff and, and your peers that work in your field and doctors and stuff. And, but that's about it. But you haven't seen your friends, you know, and you haven't been going out and hanging out and partying and drinking or going out or having fun or whatever, you know, but people crave that people. And that kind of leads to like the whole mental, you know, state of mind, mental health aspect of all this is like, man, what is this doing to all of us? You know? I mean, cause I am getting phone calls of left and right. Like every, every day I'm getting phone calls from friends that are like, you know, it's, it's anxiety issues, depression issues, because, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, I don't want to see that, you know, the news is too scary and all that. I'm like, no, look, it's simple. You know, don't, don't be scared. You know, I know it's easier said than done, but you know, you shouldn't be scared of this. You should, you should look at this as a different you know, a uh, scenario where you can prepare for this very simply, you know, like they say, wash your hands, always wash your hands. Now, you know, we're under a, a certain type of um, recommendation here. In some states, it's a mandate. It's a law, actually, in some states where if you're not covered up, 
with a mask, you know, like in Texas right now. In Texas, if you go out without a mask, you're fined a thousand dollars, you know. And yeah. here it's just a suggestion, recommendation, but people are doing it, you know, because we all have to go out, pharmacy, stores, you know, that's about yeah. all that's open really. And and it's like, you know, it takes a toll on people mentally, like, you know. Many of us are mm-hmm. depressed. Many of us are feeling anxiety. Like, you know, we're scared because we're going to, you know, we might get it or, or, but that's just the tip of the iceberg of worries because then it's like, well, I lost my job. What about paying my bills? My rent is due. I can't pay for that. Can't pay for that. And credit card bills are due and Disneyland's closed. And I don't know, you know, it's like, you know, mm-hmm. there's a whole hell of a lot of things to think about, you know? And, yeah. and it's like, you know, I, I, I feel for my friends and family that have reached out, but I keep telling them, we go, Hey, I go, look, I felt awful when I got let go from my job and this and this, and things started shutting down. But I keep looking around. I'm like, you know what? I'm not in this, this whole, this whole country is in this together, you know? Right. We like, are. We're we are. in it together. Yeah. And, and you know, a lot of us are in bad situations and some of, some of us are okay. But the thing is, it's important to reach out you know, to your friends and family, FaceTime, call them, text them, just be like, Hey, how are you doing? You know, do you need anything? You know, like all I, I've been reaching out to my friends, you know, I, I, I've been reaching out to you, Mary. It's like, you know, it's like, Hey, w- you know, what can I do? Can I help you? What do you need? You know? And, and it's not like, you know, we're calling each other to hang out or anything. No, it's more like if you need something you can't find, I will find it and I will deliver it, you know, and I'll leave it at your door. You know, we'll, we'll be safe about this, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, you know, don't be afraid to go out. And on, you know, on, on that note, it's like, you know, there's, there's things you can do to help you feel better. Like, uh, go out for a walk in your neighborhood, you know, don't, mm-hmm. don't be around people, of course. But I mean, you know, it's, it's springtime here in the U S and the West coast, you know, LA, Weather is a little bit nicer, although we're getting rain right now. But, you know, when the sun's out, go out for a walk in the sun. Let that sun hit you right between the eyes where it hurts your eyes, where you have to squint. Like, just take that, like, bask in the sun. Just take that walk, you know. Put on your headphones. Listen to this podcast. Listen to Mary and her guests, you know. (laughs) But, you know, but take that exercise. Take that walk. Do some stretching indoors and go out take that walk or, or run if you're a runner and then you know what dinner time because now the sun is setting a little bit a little bit later you know go for that 5 30 walk same thing the setting sun is beautiful you know breathe in that fresh air perfectly safe if you're out there in open spaces around away away from people you do not have to wear a mask or anything you're perfectly safe just go out there and breathe in taking the fresh air and then You'll come in and, and, and you'll feel refreshed. And, and if, and if, you, and if it turns out to be a workout or like you're feeling, you know, tired and you have that cardio you know, and all that, then it's good. Cause, cause it's like you come in and you relax and, and you'll feel better and you'll actually sleep better. But, yeah. but, uh, you know, aside from that, you know, come back in and then check on your friends and family. Every, this is a time where nobody's doing anything. It's like, nobody's working, you know, you know, nobody's able to travel, do this and that. So it's like, you know, call, you know, call, contact your, your, your friends and, and, you know, find, you know, ca- just catch up, but don't, you know, don't, don't talk about that and say, Hey, you know how many people died today? It's like, don't focus on that, you know, focus right. on, on, the, on the, on the positive. There's, 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 you know, focus on laughing. You know, there's a reason why the Hallmark Hallmark Channel has been showing Christmas movies. You know, focus on, <laughs> you know, focus on on the on the good stuff. Focus on the comedies. Focus on catching up on, you know, whatever, you know, whatever show you haven't seen yet, or you know, Netflix or, and 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 there's a lot of fun things you could do. There's you know right. there's there's a lot of companies out there that are providing, you know free channels right now free tv show like epics for example like if you yeah. have uh, access to an apple tv you can watch the epics uh channel for free right now and they have a bunch oh. of movies and stuff yeah it's 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 pretty cool i have apple tv i might check that out yeah definitely you watch a whole bunch of movies that you know usually you have to pay for you know so very interesting <laughs> yeah there's, there's, a, there's a whole lot of fun things we can do i mean people are being creative you know 
people yeah you know, and, you know, just like there's a lot of stupid people out there that don't seem to give a fuck about social distancing, there's a lot of good people out there um, who are taking it serious. Um, you know, there's a lot of elderly people who live by themselves. And so they, they might be basically um, on my, what is it, next door, next door app. What is it called? Yeah. Um, so the next door app basically... Um, on the one from my neighborhood, people were saying, if you can't uh, make um, make it to the grocery stores, we'll definitely go ahead and get you your groceries. Or, you know, people were putting teddy bears on their windows so that when they walk their kids, the neighbors walk their kids, they can, you know, have like a teddy bear lookout. So I have really liked how uh, my neighborhood has kind of come together to kind of, you know, help each other out in these hard times right um the other the other day i got into my car um to go to work to see some patients and the neighbors really literally across the street had in on chalk said you know it's okay everything's okay right and i thought that was really sweet um i also have been looking at memes online which has been my saving grace which i thought was <laughs> there's a lot of funny memes out there right um I don't know if you've seen any, have you? I oh yeah, I've seen a lot. I mean, there's I've I've had a lot of friends sh- send me some stuff, and some are hilarious, and some are just oh my god, some are so funny, some are dirty, which is hilarious. But I'm like, man, people are being really creative during these times. Yeah, and I think I feel like memes is what's making us get around, uh, not get around, get through this, um, right? <laughs> because you know. A lot of my coworkers and nurses that have been seeing patients were all a little nervous because, you know, we don't know necessarily who has it. So we assume that a lot of people have it. Um, and so we share a lot of these memes uh, with each other. And then I've been seeing non-medical professionals like kind of posting memes as well. So I've thought they were really cute. Um, do you mind if I share some? Yeah, of course. There was one that was really cute. Now, this isn't funny, but it was just like making plans then. And it's like a cute little couple. And it was like, the guy's like, we could travel to India. And the girl's like, oh, my God, so exciting. And then how versus making plans now, which is like, ooh, we can make cookies. And the girl's like, oh, my God, so exciting. Because, you know, we can't go out or we're asked voluntarily to stay home. Right. <laughs> I thought that one was really cute. That's funny. It's it's fun. It's like it's like there's there's some that are local or some that are like international. Like that one, that one made me laugh. There's yeah. one. Um. Oh my god. There's so many. I saw one that was. Uh. You know that guy who's holding the girl's hand, the girlfriend, and he's looking at another girl. Oh right, right, him. right. Have right. you seen that one? Yeah, that's it. A was basically one. yeah. It's like twenty. He's it's him. You know, being he has a mask on and he's holding 2020. His girlfriend is 2020 with the head is coronavirus. Right. And he's looking behind his back, looking at 2019. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was funny. That is funny. There's one, uh, there's one that made made me laugh that somebody was so creative was, uh, did you see see the Disneyland one? Uh, no, I haven't. So there's a couple of Disneyland ones. Uh, one of them is obvious and the other one's not so much. But the one that made me laugh was the one that says, like, there's that, famous archway on Harbor Boulevard when you drive to to Disneyland and it says, you know, welcome to Disneyland, whatever. And there's one that, that the sign's been covered up, the Disney lo- logo's been covered up, and it says Spirit Halloween Store coming soon. Because, <laughs> like, you know, if you live here in L.A., probably the same in other states, around Halloween time, you know, the Spirit Halloween stores take over the empty shops. Yeah. And they set up yep. their Halloween stuff. Oh, and the, the other one was funny was they're showing... um the cars of uh, Space Mountain and Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, you know, there's no people. Obviously, the parks are closed, right? Disney parks. So it shows right. it shows ducks and cats on top of Space Mountain. On top of the, you, know, you, know, you know, at the end of the ride, it takes a picture at Space Mountain. Yeah. It's, it, it, the picture is of ducks sitting there instead of people and cats. <laughs> and at first I was thinking... They've taken over. Yeah, because if, you, if, you, if, you know, if you've been to Disneyland, Disney World, uh, a couple of things, there's ducks everywhere that live in the park and they're, they're very nice. They're very, you know, fun looking ducks. And also supposedly there's this thing at night where the Disney releases the cats into the park. 
Because it's mm. th- there's supposedly they keep the the rats away. How about the ghosts? No, the ghosts are still there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that for another episode. But I, I did I did contribute one meme though, and and that that was where um where I said McDonald's can use this downtime to fix all the ice cream machines. Mm, seriously, because they're always down when you you're craving one. Right. It's like you know it's summertime. It's like 102 degrees, and you want that ice cream cone or a shake or frap whatever and they go and they're like sorry the machine's down and i'm like w- w- really <laughs> i saw one that was funny that a friend posted that said stepped on my scale this morning and it said please use social distancing one person at a time <laughs> oh ouch <laughs> that's funny I, there, there's there's one i saw i said this there was a roll of toilet paper that was uh like dyed green and it said I'm selling CBD added to marijuana toilet paper to calm y'all asses down. <laughs> that does funny. Yeah. I have another one that says introverts. Check in on your extrovert friends. They are not okay. They have no idea how this works. Yeah. Right. Oh, my uh, God. Did you, did, saw... you the, uh, did you see the, uh, um, oh, my God, what's his name from the Rolling Stones? Um, Mc... uh, not Mick Jagger. Uh, yeah, Mick Jagger, was it? Mm, I don't know. Did you see that one that said, um, it says, the, it's, it's a picture of him smoking, and it says, no, I'm sorry, it's Keith Richards. Mm. It's Keith Richards, and it's a picture of him smoking, and it says, if he goes, we all go. Because <laughs> like, you know, the funny thing about, you know, he lives forever. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and I thought, uh, there's that funny, did you see that one, that, the, there's a funny one with the, um, with the, it's a picture of a, of a old man uh, talking to his grandson and it says grandson the gr- the grandson's asking the question grandson says what caused the great toilet paper shortage of 2020 and grandpa says well my boy let me take it back to the summer of 2016 there was this gorilla named harambe oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about harambe <laughs> <laughs> right i mean it, it, i mean it's sad what happened with harambe but i mean it's like he's become this internet hero you know everything went downhill from there yeah what it's suggesting yeah it's like it's like nature, <laughs> nature's taking revenge because of you know of that situation <laughs> i saw one that was a cartoon that was of a lady with her laptop and she's asking a coworker, should i sign my emails with be safe be well or with ah like screaming because we're all panicking <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Oh my god! Did did you see the social distancing pickup lines? I did, I did. But do you mind if I read them? Yeah, give them to me. I want to see if they work on me. If COVID nineteen doesn't take you out, can I? I like that. <laughs> I was waiting for your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. See, you gave me that voice where I'm like, yeah, I'll, yeah. Oh yeah. Is that hand sanitizer in your pocket, or are you just happy to be within six feet of me? Ooh. That that'll work too. <laughs> Since all the public libraries are closed, I'm checking you out instead. <laughs> That's funny. I'm sorry. I'm having too much fun with these. Those are great. You can't spell virus without you and I. <laughs> Baby, do you need toilet paper? Because I can be your prince charming. That's my line right there. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you from across the bar. Stay there. That's two funny. more, two more. Without you, my life is as empty as a supermarket shelf. That's funny. And hey, babe, can I ship you a drink? See, the one I'll, the one I'd use would be like, you know, you can't spell quarantine without you are a Q T. I did see that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, let's see. There's, there's a there funny, was... there's a funny one if mm-hmm. you if you if you like eating. Um, pork rinds you know some people love them they you know, they, you know especially like while watching games and stuff as a snack is one that said just choked on the pork rind now i can't stop coughing must have chicharrona virus chicharrona. <laughs> oh lord the uh one that i saw too was like one day you'll be able to tell your grandkids i survived the great toilet paper shortage of 2020 yeah <laughs> There's one, uh, oh my, this, this was a funny one. This one, um, it's, it's a, it's, it's a snapshot of a Twitter feed. So it was, um, it was G- Jesus 
who just posted a Twitter message says, Hey guys, took a small vacation. What's up? And this guy responded and says, well, a guy ate a bat and now I'm unemployed. Oh Lord. (laughs) (laughs) I swear to God, memes are life right now. (laughs) (laughs) There's, There's one that's so funny that makes total sense. It's like, it shows a, it shows two pictures, right? And the top picture is a family at home on the couch and every member of the family, four people, dad, mom, and two kids, every, everybody's on their phone or computer or, la- or laptop, right? Mm-hmm. And, and it says people normally. And then the bottom picture says picture during quarantine. And it shows the families out in the park walking yes. in public with other people. <laughs> oh my God. That, that is a reality right now. <laughs> oh my God. Did, did you see the meme where there's a dog like on top of the kitchen cabinet? And it was like, I refuse to go walking with you guys. You've taken me out for like 20 times today. Like something like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. That's funny. There's some yeah. funny sexual ones that I thought were hilarious. One that said, it ain't Netflix and chill no more. It's quarantine and Vaseline. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> or seclude and get nude. Have you heard of uh, people are saying that if people have get pregnant during the quarantine, their babies will be called not millennials or Generation Z, X. They'll be Coronians. Ooh, that's, that's a terrible name. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh, so I really want to thank you for taking time to talk to me about this. We got a little serious at first. But I was, it was nice to finish with some happy memes, some of them pretty stupid, but that's what keeps us going, right? It's the laughter. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, look, life sucks right now. Not just for you, for everybody. If you have kids, yeah. trust me, they don't understand what's going on, but it sucks for them too because, you know, they're missing out their friends, their school, their classes, their teachers. And, the, the, you know, the important thing to remember and realize that Uh, during these times is that people have problems right every every one of us have problems and for one person that little tiny problem to you is nothing it's the end of the world for them right you know so that's you gotta remember that because we're all different we all deal with things differently and it's just like you know be compassionate you know it's like listen to people it's you know you can't blow them off and be like well, are you complaining about this, whatever? Yeah, but you don't realize that to them, that's the end of the world. That's a huge problem. But to us, it's trivial. And then what we consider our problems, it's trivial to somebody else, you know, because we're lucky to be healthy and happy and, you know, able to do things. Yet, you know, some people have it worse. Some people are probably dealing through cancer, chemotherapy during these difficult times. And it's like, that cannot be easy. You know, that's got to suck really bad, you know? Yeah, it so, really does. So it's just like, hey, use use this time and, you know, reach out to friends and, you know, look look for, don't look for the negative stuff. Look for the positive stuff. But Correct. S- stay informed. Stay definitely informed. But don't park yourself in front of CNN all day long and watch all the negative stuff. It's like, no, no, stay informed, shut it off, and then move on and be entertained. You know, go watch something, catch up on something, read read some books, you know, Spread some positivity. Check in on your neighbors, your friends, your family. Check in on me, guys. Yeah, check in on Mary. <laughs> check in on me, please. <laughs> Make sure I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she needs it. <laughs> Daily. <laughs> Daily, seriously. No, but yeah, it's it's just an interesting time because I always think back, and, and it's funny, I, I posted this video uh, a couple weeks ago. I think back to that one Twilight Zone episode. You ever watch that show growing up, Mary? No, I did not. It's a great episode of uh, a banker who loves to read, right? He's a total bookworm, just like you. <laughs> I, know, I know you love reading. He's a total bookworm. <laughs> and and he, he's a banker. And what he does is he takes his book during the lunch hour and goes into the, um, the bank vault to read. And so instead of eating lunch, he's more excited to read. So he sits there, sits there and reads his book and he's so happy. He's a total nerd. He's like, oh my God, this is amazing. But while he's in there, a nuclear bomb goes off and the world is destroyed, right? So he, he wakes up and he comes out of the vault and he realizes he's alone. And he's like, what, what happened? He's like, what, you know, what's going on in the world? And he, and he, he's panicking and he wants to commit suicide with a gun because he, he, you know, it's like, 
he's the last person on earth, you know? But when he looks over and realizes there's a library across the street, he walks over and he starts making stacks of books. He's like, I'm so excited. He's like, this is what I'm going to read for March and April and May and the year next year and the year after. And he's like, I'm so happy. I got nothing but time. Nothing but time is all I ever wanted. It was nothing but time. And he leans over to, to, to pick up this one dusty book and his glasses fall off and crack. And then now he can't see. Mm. So it ends on, ends on, on a sad note where he finally gets what he wanted. Nothing but time. But now he can't read a book. No. <laughs> so now that we all have nothing but time, well, the ones that don't have to work, you know, and, you know, it's like, hey, you know, find something to do. It's like, you know, I'm, you know, helping people trying to stay sane in my life by just, you know, talking them through it. And then in my personal free time, I'm trying to get motivated to start painting again and, you know, doing more music and stuff here from home. And I'm still recording podcasts, you know, so I'm doing my own podcast and, um, helping you out with this one, you know, but yeah, it's thank like, you. Yeah, you know, it's, it's telling people that, Hey, there, there's things you can do. There's things you can learn. We still have the internet. We still have YouTube. You can watch instructional videos, learn how to bake a cake. And, oh, and by the way, I sent you a text. And did you, you did. get that text that I sent you? Yes. Subscribe. So the text you sent me was a picture of Betty Crocker's oatmeal chocolate chip cookie mix. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But how many are there in that picture? Seven okay. packages. <laughs> right. So the, when this whole quarantine lockdown stay at home mandate was issued, it was like, I started going to the store because I'm like, well, what do we need? Okay, toilet paper, you know, cleaning supplies, nothing. I could find nothing. Mm. I was so like, it was depressing. I'm like, I, there's no milk. There's no eggs. There's no nothing. Like, so I seriously went throughout the store and I'm like, I'm not one to buy cookies or anything. You know, I don't keep junk food in my house, but I, I walk past and I'm like, nobody's buying the cookie mix. <laughs> cool. And, and I, and I bought one package. Right. And then I, mm-hmm. and then I went home and I, and I, and I made those cookies and I'm like, damn, those were good. So I go back to the store again, right? A few days later, store is still not stocked. Okay. Mind you, this is, this is weeks ago. Okay. So now I'm, now I'm like depressed. I'm like, I can't find things I need. Like, what the hell? Went back to the cookie aisle and I bought like the remaining five they had. So I bought, I bought them all. I was thinking, oh wow! I was thinking, if you people are hoarding toilet paper and my cleaning supplies that that, that that I want and need, I'm gonna take your cookies away. Yeah, you're part of the problem, Leone. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> you know what? I wanted to fucking bake cookies, and now I can't because your ass took all of them. Not That's just right. kidding. I'm well, just teasing. <laughs> hey, I'll trade. I'll trade you for a tub of Lysol wipes. Oh, I don't have Lysol. See, I do have Clorox. I'll, I'll take those. <laughs> <laughs> I love Clorox. Yeah, that's so funny. No. Well, I appreciate and really thank you so much for setting this up. I think this is pretty cool so that we can kind of keep it going and keep the podcast going and, you know, kind of discuss on this episode what's been going on and, you know, how we, we kind of had a deep discussion in the beginning. Um, but I would hope that maybe we could do this again next week. Maybe not talk about coronavirus, but yeah, definitely we're, we're, we're off topic. We're going to change the topic. We're going to do something fun, yes. something different. The purposely curious podcast. This yeah. is, you know, stuff, um, things that, you know, topics that you may not know too much about, but yet are very curious about. That's yeah. what Mary's all about. Yeah. And <laughs> She'll be bringing to you some some new and exciting, fun stuff. So stay tuned and uh, make sure to subscribe to this podcast. Give us a rating and tell your friends about it because Mary's got some fun guests coming up and some fun topics. So definitely stay tuned and, you know, we're here for you. Yes. And I hope that you guys are all safe out there and practicing social distancing. And I, I really hope that this will be over sooner than later and we will get through this together. Definitely. We really will get through this. It's the only way to get through it is if we all work together and, you know, we will see the end of the 
I guess, the storm to yeah. know, weather it. Right, right. Well, thank you so much, Leonie. You're welcome, Mary. Thank you for having me. And uh, we'll be in touch. We'll do this again soon. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Stay safe out there. You, you. you are on the front lines of this. And I always tell you how grateful I am uh, for you. And, and, and you are a hero, just, just like everybody is saying, because you're out there treating people, whether or not you're being exposed to this or not, it, it is your job, it is your duty. And you're seeing the ugliness of this disease up front and personal. But we're all grateful for you. So I want to say from me personally to you, thank you very much. Oh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> There's no crying in baseball. Oh, I hate baseball. <laughs> <laughs> 100,000 people just unsubscribed from your podcast. Damn it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Leonie. And uh, we'll see you next week. How about that? Sounds oh, good. I just sounded like that chick. Meet you outside. How about that? <laughs> Catch you out. Catch me outside. <laughs> Catch me outside. God, How about that? <laughs> Why I know that? Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> Next week, we're going to make it fun and not so depressing. So yes. thank you guys for, if you've made it this far, for listening to this podcast episode. And I will see you next time. Aloha. Aloha. That was episode four of the Purposely Curious podcast. Make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And follow us on social media at Purposely Curious on Instagram and at Purposely C Pod on Twitter. That's Purposely, the letter C, pod. Until next time, you know what to do.